Welcome to College Physics. Today we're going to talk about motion in one dimension, displacement, and average velocity. These are things, their properties, that describe the motion of an object. In this case, we're going to make things a little simpler and just talk about a particle. A particle is kind of a theoretical thing. It's just a small little point light charge. But it's a good way to start. Now if we talk about the motion of an actual particle or person or thing, it's a vector quantity because you have a magnitude and a direction. If you talk about, for example, a person walking somewhere, Let's say uh, five miles in the east direction. Okay, that's a magnitude which is going to be the five miles and then our direction is going to be east. So that would be an example of a vector displacement. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit. Let's draw a graph here. What we want to do is draw a graph of displacement. Let's see, let's try to draw a good line here. There is our time. There is our x-axis, or displacement. Now we've got this displacement right here. So let's look at a couple of points. Let's call that T1. T2. And that corresponds to a displacement X1. And X2. So those are two specific points on this graph. The coordinates of this one are going to be T1, X1. The coordinates of that point are going to be T2, X2. So those are two specific points in this one-dimensional plot. It's just moving in the X direction. So now our change in position Or displacement is x2 minus x1 which is equal to delta x so that's our movement in the x direction now our average velocity we're going to define as the average is going to be our change in x, delta x, over delta t. That's what that delta symbol means, just a change in. So that's going to be x2 minus x1 divided by x2, I'm a t2, minus t1. So that tells us what our average velocity is over that period of time. Now let's go in and find another quantity. Let's define the slope. This is just back from math. It's a delta change in the x, delta t. And basically that's going to be a geometric interpretation. Uh, the slope uh, just by definition so let's look at some examples let's put some numbers to some of this make a little
hopefully a little more concrete for you. So in this case, we're going to say x1 is equal to 18 meters. Time 1 is going to be 2 seconds. x2 is going to be 3 meters. At t2 equal to 7 seconds. So we want to know the displacement. How far did this little particle go? Which is just delta x. So it's x2 minus x1. So x2 is 7 3 minus 18. So that's equal to minus 15 meters. So it went 15 meters to the left. Let's see what our average velocity is. So our V average, we define that is equal to delta x change of position divided by the change of time is equal to x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1 so that's 3 meters minus 18 meters for our displacement and then we had 7 seconds was our t2 minus 2 was our t1 so that's minus 15 meters divided by 5 seconds. That's going to give us minus 3 meters per second. So that's going to be our average velocity. We're going to the left at minus 3 meters per second. So we're going, we're moving to the left. which is just fine. All right, let's look at another example. Another example. Okay, how far does a car go in five minutes if its average velocity is 60 miles per hour. So there's our question. My guess is going to involve some units. So let's see, we want to solve this. We do know our Velocity average is going to be equal to delta x divided by delta t. In this case, we want to know delta x. So we're going to move the delta t to the left side of the equation. And so it's v average times delta t. So our delta x is going to be equal to that's 60 miles per hour. So that's our average velocity. And we're going to go for five minutes. Now the problem is that it doesn't really, the minutes and the hours don't cancel out. So now we're going to have to convert and get rid of the hours and the minutes. So we got one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So now the minutes will cancel and then the hours cancel. So just looking at the simple math on this, the 60 cancels with that 60. And so all we're left with is five miles because the hours canceled out, the miles canceled out, I mean the minutes canceled out here and here, and then we're left with just miles. 
So that is the distance that the car traveled, five miles. All right, let's do one more example. Let's see, a car travels in a straight highway at an average velocity. So we've got straight, just a line, highway, average velocity of 60 miles per hour for 2.5 hours then slows whoops that's an L slows to 30 miles per hour for 1.5 hours. So what is the total displacement then? How far did this car go? It went for a period of time, 2.5 hours is 60 miles per hour, and then it slows to 30 miles per hour for an hour and a half. So our total displacement now is equal to the change in displacement for the first leg of the trip plus the change in displacement for the second leg of the trip. So that's breaking that down from our previous example. That's V average the first part of the trip times the amount of time we traveled in the first part of the trip plus V average 2 for the second interval of time that we traveled. So we just insert our numbers here. We've got 60 miles per hour and then we traveled for 2.5 hours plus we went for 30 a velocity of 30 miles per hour for 1.5 hours so breaking that down 60 times 2.5 is 150 miles Second part of the journey, 30 times 1.5 is going to be 45 miles, which is equal to a grand total of 195 miles. So the car traveled in that period of time 195 miles. So this is a, an example of a displacement where you break it up into two segments and then there's two uh, velocities. Well, I hope you got something out of this uh, video. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.